Hello, welcome to the Thursday, March 5th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, we got some abandoned subdomains in the news again. This time it was security researchers Numan Otsdemir and Ozan Akdibi that found a about 700 of these or 800, depending on how you count linked to Microsoft. The tricky part here is that what Microsoft is doing, and that's what a lot of companies are doing, that they're setting up a new subdomain for some project, and then they're using a DNS C name to essentially redirect that subdomain to a particular Azure host in the case of Microsoft, of course, the same would probably work with most cloud providers. After they're done with that particular subdomain, the project is discontinued. They are removing the website, but the DNS entry remains. So what can happen now is that someone is coming in, is setting up a website on that particular cloud provider with the same name that uh, the original company like here, Microsoft, choose for the site. Since the CNAME lookup still exists in Microsoft's DNS, visitors are now redirected, for example, for something like identityhelp.microsoft.com or mybrowser.microsoft.com to the attacker's website. And given that companies like Let's Encrypt will give you a TLS certificate, even if you are just able to put up a website with that host name. So that could potentially here lead to a pretty good phishing website. So what these researchers did was essentially write a script to look for abandoned websites, uh, abandoned subdomains .microsoft.com. Then next they looked up, hey, is there a C name that points to some kind of Azure host name? And then they sort of try to take over a couple of uh, these abandoned host names as a proof of concept. Now the report is to Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft, I don't think has taken action yet. Microsoft does not consider this really sort of a security problem. Uh, not sure I agree here, but I don't exactly know Microsoft's reasoning for this. So uh, we'll see how this all works out. It's of course very difficult for a large company like Microsoft to track all of these thousands of subdomains they are probably creating for various projects. One sort of quick fix that may solve at least the TLS problem would be one of those CAA records that I talked about yesterday where Microsoft says, hey, uh, if you have a Microsoft.com domain, you have to get a TLS certificate from Microsoft's certificate authority doesn't actually look like Microsoft has a CAA record set up for Microsoft.com. Again, given the size of the company, they probably want to remain flexible and be able to pull certificates from different certificate authorities. Well, and since we are talking about phishing here, let's stay with the topic a little bit longer. There's a post by Matt Hamilton uh, from Soluble.ai. Well, and he's sort of rediscovering here a probably 10 plus year old attack, calling it a zero day, and that's homoglyphs. Homoglyphs essentially uh, refers to having uh, letters in different languages that look alike. And it has been a sort of an ongoing issue that someone can register a domain name using a foreign character that impersonates a domain name with the respective normal Latin character or ASCII character. Now, like I said, it has been an old issue. It has actually sort of been fixed for the most part. Most of these uh, domain names will not be displayed by browsers. And I took a couple that they here discovered and it sort of looked interesting. Like they sort of had a chase.com lookalike and no browser that I tried out did actually display it as a foreign character. Browsers have gotten really picky when it comes uh, to domain names with sort of mixed language. Uh, they will not display the foreign character in this case and instead will actually display Punicode, which looks 
totally different. It's actually something uh, that uh, we keep covering, keep running into in our Defending Web Application class. So not really big news, but if you see the article, don't worry about it. Uh, not much really that you need or can do about this particular problem. And yesterday I mentioned coronavirus and the possibility of phishing and such. Uh, via Twitter, Jake uh, did uh, report an interesting uh, fish has been taken down uh, by now. But first of all, it did use TLS uh, via Let's Encrypt, even though it didn't really sort of impersonate a particular uh, domain name. It, I believe, just used the domain name that was already associated with that particular compromised website. But I found, at least according to the screenshot that Jake posted, the site looked uh, quite nicely done, sort of promised information about the coronavirus outbreak. So uh, you know, a lot of people these days, of course, are looking for information. And uh, with that, if they are sending an email, promise missing some PDF or whatever to download. And then they're asking for your email credential in this case to allow you to download the PDF. And also a number of tech companies that offer remote uh, meeting solutions like Cisco with WebEx and Microsoft Teams and others have offered a uh, pretty generous sort of free trial offers, I believe up to six months and such. Uh, in light of uh, the coronavirus to make it easier for companies to sort of get started quickly with a remote working. So you don't need to fill out purchase orders and such first, but you can just get started and essentially worry later about whether or not you want to continue uh, that service. Well, uh, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.